And who are you? And my name is Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi. I know you from the days of the Manitoba Puppet Theater. That's correct. I've been around for a while. So much. All right. And um, I actually live in Mosley. But I have been involved. I live in Mosley, um, but um, was driven to drive here um, because um, I've become very involved with Manitoba Energy Justice Coalition and many of the young people that are here and proud to be standing next to them. Um, but my question to you this evening has got to do with jobs. And I'm going to a little bit of a preamble here, actually two things. One is water and one is jobs. So recently I was at a family wedding um, and there were two young gentlemen there that were in the oil industry in Alberta. And I asked the boys, the gentlemen, um, what their feelings were about their jobs. And one of them was working on the rigs, and one of them was working on the tar sands up in, in the, whatever it is, the big pits or whatever. And both of the men said that they would be very happy to be working elsewhere to transition to other jobs. And if you look at the people that are working and making their living in the tar sands, most of those people are coming from outside of the province of Alberta. Families have been torn apart. They've left their families in Eastern Canada. They've moved to Alberta in order to work in the tar sands. And I don't quite understand why we would be spending so much money and so much energy, and we know that it costs so much energy to produce tar sands oil, why would we be investing in that as opposed to be moving our monies and our investment to renewable resources as quickly as possible, as is being done in many countries around the world, so that people don't get torn away from their families, so that they're not living in a place, if you ask the people in Fort McMurray, most of them will say they would never, ever settle and live there. The game is to come, make your half a million dollars, and get out in your five years or as quickly as possible, and go home. And we talk about jobs across the provinces, across the prairie provinces, including Manitoba. The number of jobs are minimal. Yes, job. Yes, fair transition. But how can we possibly justify spending money on oil and the tar sands as opposed to spending money on transitioning into green jobs? Why? What's your second point? That's your second point, too. Respond to it. I would like, can Excuse you respond? Me, are you, are you, no, can you respond to the order. other, the other oh, issue? Oh, I, I was yeah. wondering if it was in order. It sounded like mine. Uh, why is it Are you getting tired? Because you're getting a little spicy. Why is it? Why, 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 why is it one or the other? Well, that's why, what why, you why, why, why do you set up that dichotomy of why aren't we investing in green technology. Why aren't we but investing Jim, in okay, Jim, sources you of said energy? yourself. We are. Well, you say that you are. Okay. Well, we are. But so we don't we hear see. about. Okay, so why is it, Jim? Well, why don't we hear about that in the media? Why do we always hear in the media and from the government that if we pull away from the oil sands development? that we are going to be taking jobs away from hard-working Canadians. Well, Why is that it. always what we hear in the media? Well, Everybody thinks... Because and there's no transition plan. There, but if people were to stop working in the, in the oil industry, then everybody would be out of jobs. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Okay. Okay? But I, want, I have a question about water. Okay? I want to know if, in fact, they go through with the Energy East Pipeline. If that Energy East Pipeline goes through, and the plans to pump the bitumen through our 40-year-old pipeline, which is science tells us that that pipeline is going to, going to leak underneath in the ground, and it runs parallel to the Winnipeg Aqueduct. 
I want to know how you are going to prevent or keep the water clean for the citizens of Winnipeg when we have a very old aqueduct that is porous and absorbs materials as the water flows through the watershed. The, um, <laughs> the National Energy Board will have 21 months to assess the energy use by uh, And you and other Canadians who have an interest will have every opportunity to express themselves, including on issues that are as focused on a local situation as the one that you have just described. Can we file a motion? The uh, no, 21 months of the National Energy Board consultation will be followed by another number of months of, of a government filling in the gaps as it sees fit. So there will be at least two years for all of these questions to be posed, for scientific evidence to be unveiled, to be assessed, to be adjudicated, in full public view. And I would encourage you to have this very same conversation as you will have many opportunities to do with the hearings of the National Energy Board in Manitoba, wherever in the country they are, online, to continue the conversation up with me. And that who in this room, who in this country, would want to approve any project that didn't pass the highest safety standards? So I, I truly believe that we have to have a sense of responsibility in safety, which is why we passed the Pipeline Safety Act just in the last number of months of the last parliament, uh, which moves us much further along that road. Safety should be paramount for all Canadians for every project, whether it's a pipeline or a wastewater system or a nuclear plant. Safety is the number one responsibility of the government. Your, your new pipeline okay. is just, just Sean, Sean, you've had your, you've had your second. Okay, um, listen, ladies and gentlemen, it's quarter.